Hello, curious minds, what exactly is a dwarf planet and why was Pluto reclassified? Today we're diving into the story of planets, dwarf planets and one of astronomy's most debated decisions, let's get started. First and foremost, what does it actually take to be considered a planet? Is it about size, shape, or something else entirely? Let's break it down. For most of history, a planet was simply a wandering star, a bright dot in the sky that moved differently from the fixed stars. As telescopes improved, we discovered more of these wanderers, Uranus, Neptune, and eventually Pluto in 1930. But as we started to look deeper into space, things got complicated. In the early 2000s, astronomers started discovering other objects beyond Neptune like Eris, which was nearly the same size as Pluto. If Pluto was a planet, should Eris be one too? And what about the other Pluto-like objects in the Kuiper Belt? Astronomers realized they needed a clear scientific definition of what makes a planet, well, a planet. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, stepped in and created three criteria for a celestial body to qualify as a planet. First, it must orbit the Sun. Second, it must have enough gravity to pull itself into a nearly round shape. And third, it must have cleared its orbit of other debris, meaning it's gravitationally dominant in its neighborhood. If a celestial body meets all three of these rules, congratulations, it's a planet. You might be wondering why does this definition even matter? Well, astronomy is about understanding the universe in an organized way. Without clear rules, every large rock floating in space could technically be called a planet. Scientists needed consistency, especially as new technology allowed us to discover more and more distant worlds. So with these three rules in place, Pluto's status was about to face a major test. But what exactly happened during that debate? And how did Pluto go from being the ninth planet to a dwarf planet? Let's dive into that next. So, astronomers needed a new way to categorize these celestial oddities. In 2006, alongside redefining what makes a planet, the International Astronomical Union introduced a brand new category, dwarf planet. So what exactly is a dwarf planet? It must orbit the sun, has enough gravity to become nearly round, but, unlike planets, it hasn't cleared its orbital neighborhood. Essentially, a dwarf planet is like a planet's little sibling. It shares some characteristics, but it's not quite there. Currently, our solar system officially has five recognized dwarf planets. In order of distance from the sun, they are Ceres, Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. But here's the kicker. The IAU says there may be many more dwarf planets, perhaps more than a hundred, waiting to be discovered. Now let's spill the tea. How did Pluto go from being the ninth planet to a dwarf planet? And why did it cause such a stir? Well, the story begins with a vote, a lot of debate, and some very divided opinions. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union held a vote to officially define what makes a planet. This was a huge moment for astronomy. But, here's the twist. Not every astronomer got a say. The vote was made by a small group of IAU members, mainly those who specialized in planetary science. In fact, only about 400 astronomers participated in the vote, out of thousands worldwide. This raised some eyebrows. Was it fair for such a small group to make such a monumental decision for the whole field of astronomy? Some people thought the decision was rushed or too exclusive. The debate around Pluto's status was intense. Many scientists and even the public were attached to the idea of Pluto being a planet. After all, it had been the ninth planet for over 75 years, so why change it? But others argued that Pluto just didn't fit the scientific criteria for being a planet. Yes, it orbits the sun and is spherical, but it's far from clearing its orbit of debris. Plus, Pluto's orbit is very tilted and elliptical compared to the other planets. In fact, at times it actually crosses Neptune's orbit. This makes it seem more like a comet or asteroid than a planet. There could be hundreds of objects like Pluto out there in the Kuiper Belt. Could we really call all of them planets? So, does it really matter what we call Pluto? As it turns out, the answer is a lot more significant than you might think. First, let's talk about why scientists need categories in the first place. The universe is vast, with billions of stars, planets, and moons. To make sense of all these objects, we need a way to organize them. Think of it like books. If you just put all the books on shelves randomly, it would be a nightmare to find anything, right? But if you organize them by genre, author, or subject, suddenly you have a system. Classification works the same way for celestial bodies. It helps scientists group celestial bodies based on their shared characteristics, which makes understanding them and comparing them easier. Without clear categories, astronomy would be a chaotic mess. Imagine if every new planet-sized object discovered beyond Neptune was just called a planet. That would make studying our solar system and even teaching it to students impossible. By clearly defining what constitutes a planet, scientists can better study the formation and evolution of planets. In overall, the Pluto debate wasn't just about Pluto, it was about how to categorize all these other objects we were discovering in the outer solar system. 
Now we know some people still feel attached to Pluto's planetary status, and that's okay. It's good to have a healthy debate, to question our assumptions, to keep exploring. After all, science thrives on curiosity and the willingness to challenge the status quo. But whether you call it a planet or a dwarf planet, one thing's for sure. Pluto is a fascinating world, full of mysteries yet to be unraveled. We've learned so much about Pluto in recent years thanks to the New Horizons mission. This groundbreaking mission has provided us with unprecedented insights into Pluto's composition and behavior. We've seen its heart-shaped glacier, its towering mountains, its nitrogen-rich atmosphere. These discoveries have painted a picture of a world that is far more dynamic and complex than we ever imagined. Its surface is constantly changing, shaped by geological processes that we are only beginning to understand. And who knows what other secrets Pluto holds? The more we learn, the more questions arise, fueling our desire to explore further. Maybe it harbors evidence of ancient oceans, or even the building blocks of life itself. These possibilities make Pluto an exciting target for future missions and studies, so, let's keep exploring, keep asking questions and keep marveling at the wonders of the cosmos. And there you have it. Whether it's a planet or a dwarf planet, Pluto will always have a special place in our hearts, and our solar system. But what do you think? Should Pluto still be considered a planet, or is the current classification fair? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.